afternoon, I'm sharing my inspiration for my next watercolor painting. I'm here on the coast of Winthrop, Massachusetts. The overcast atmosphere is just perfect for what I have in mind. It calls for a simplified color palette and just enough reflection. For today's demonstration, I'm going to interpret an oil painting by Claude Monet titled Ships in a Harbor. My name is Marion Eismann. I'm a studio art instructor for the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. You can check out more of my work on my website. And if you like, follow me on my Instagram at Marion the Board Artist. Let's get started. Generally, I start out with a smaller composition or thumbnail sketch where I determine focal points and various weight arrangements. I'm now laying out the horizon line and larger components, the bodies of the ships, the masts and sails. Actually, when drawing a vessel, it helps me to think in walnut halves. For the clouds, I now wet the paper. I first mix up a dash of cerulean blue with a sliver of ivory black watercolor paint, just to make it a bit more muddy and overcast looking. I decided to assign an area with a darker blue to make the sky appear between the clouds. Even though I'm interpreting an oil painting with watercolor, I'm still keen in maintaining the impressionistic feel and approach of the original. I'm applying swift brush strokes to indicate the formation of the clouds and I'm going to do similar to pronounce the movement of the waves and subtle swaying of the ships. Great job so far! Now the background needs to dry and I use the time to pick up some fresh water. To speed up the drying process, you can also use a paper as fan. Certain wet areas may still benefit in letting the next layer of color flow into the existing, but not too much. I aim for the same edge and backlit look for the masts and sails as my reference painting suggests it, and separate the midground elements from the distant sky as much as possible. So I start with the bodies of the ships until the rest of the paper is dry. I'm mixing together a cerulean blue with some black and also use a tad of viridian green for the bottom part, the hull of the ship. It makes sense to mix enough of the same color and mid-tone to have it available for the entire treatment of the mid-ground. While working on the vertical lines, I'm referencing and looking for the appropriate placement of the crossing lines. Besides using the brush tip with very little pressure, I also use a stamp method to scatter some more lines and intensify the complexity and tangle of sails, ropes and masts.
and now progressing to my darkest darks in the painting, the backsides, the sterns of the vessels. Moving on to the water reflections, because water is denser than the air, the reflections of the sky in the water will almost always be darker than the sky it is mirroring. Whereas the darker tones of the dry land, including the ships, become lighter, less saturated and more dull. As the water in my reference is not too choppy, the reflections are more like a mirroring effect. If the water was more disturbed due to stronger winds, less or no reflections would be visible. I take a quick step away from my painting. Zooming out helps me to give it once more a critical look. I realize now that it would make sense to reinforce the horizon level, ground of the shoreline and dock once more. I feel I need to connect and tie together my mid-tone elements a bit better. Lastly, I plant a few more curvy brush strokes for the reflections of the masts and use the remaining color in my brush for some more movement in the water. Finally, I'm removing the masking tape and as a result I have a clean white border as a framing device. I hope this was helpful, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now!